How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wrestle Dream Sunday. I guess that's a thing now. Wrestle Dream is today. EW putting on another pay per view. There's another one next month, and maybe something in December. We'll talk about that today. NXT No Mercy was last night. I got to tell you, I'm liking this version of no, uh, NXT. Dick Diggity Dog. Great job with the, um, with the preview videos that they put on. You know, I feel like they have some flexibility that the main roster doesn't do. And I don't know why. We'll talk about that also. You know, these little throwbacks are pretty cool with the old pay-per-view names and the, uh, the graphics that they're using. And also they had actual uh, clips from the video game No Mercy. That's 20-something years old. Tony had a media call, and boy, did it, did it cause some stir. Tony said some interesting things there regarding w WBD's relationship with AEW, whether or not they own a piece. He also mentioned the uh, pay-per-view schedule coming up, or Wacka mentioned the pay-per-view schedule coming up. A lot of changes happening here for this company. WWE gearing up to a pay-per-view next week. Fast lane, pay payback. I don't know why I mix those two up. It seems like everybody also does. I will do a little quick period preview there also, and all the news of the week we're going to talk about, especially Jade signing a multi year deal with WWE, and what the, what does this mean for her? How much of a hit is this to AEW? And who's next? It's not Bill Goldberg. That was not a Bill Go Goldberg reference, guys. We're going to talk about all of this, obviously, and a whole lot more. Today on Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Man, it cleared up here in New York. We had a brutal couple days of bad weather. Terrible. Nobody wanted to go out. Nobody wanted to do anything. But it's clearing up here in fall this year. It's excellent. Let's go into some news, huh? Jade Cargill signs a multi-year contract with WWE. This was a big topic of discussion uh jade dominant run in aew really dominant run in aew they presented her as a main eventer from the beginning she walked in there i think she had a great run great look and about a year ago i i mean i know that they had their eyes on her her, her along with a couple other people i think you guys could fill in the blanks but jade was interesting because it was always said to me that she's a complete act Right, they don't have to create it for her. Like they, they actually very much like the Jade look and the feel. And I, I, I listen. We don't know until they go on TV. But I was told that they wanted to keep that act intact. Um, they, they want to elevate her immediately. They want to push her immediately because she is a great addition to the women's roster on, in that company. Now, whether or not she's in a major title picture, I have no idea. Uh, but you know, she left AEW. She's taking getting a lot of money from WWE. We spoke about this last week also, that she's represented by WME. She's, Cody's a big fan of hers. So there, obviously the tie-in makes a lot of sense for her. And she's, she wants to go and do other things outside of wrestling. And if you have the William Morris arm with this Endeavor merger kind of backing you, and I, I'm not saying that that's exactly what's happening here, but you could kind of feel that that's what's going to happen. How could it be a bad decision to make, especially for her? I don't know if the schedule, she's going to like it. But she's a total, I mean, just a great athlete, great look, great presentation. I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what they do here. ESPN reported it on Tuesday morning that she was reporting to the Performance Center all day. WWE put out videos of her training, of her entering the Performance Center. She also, in an interview she did with Ringer later that day, she said that uh, she knows what brand she's going to and that she felt that she had more opponents in the WWE. Yeah, and more opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, and that's not saying that's not going against uh, AEW in any way. I just think that she has, she definitely has more opportunities in WWE. Look at the media connections that she's going to have. You know, and, and here's the thing. It's a new company. EW is just, you know, 
they're four years old. WWE is an institution. Of course, the opportunities are more over there. And that's not a knock. Depends on what you're looking to do. But I'm really curious to see what happens here. So this is interesting. Matt Riddle was released on Saturday. We spoke about this. And TMZ posted the video of him. Uh, it seems like he's drunk. Uh, I'm not going to. I don't know. He's something's going on at the airport. And he's being loud. He's, you know, making a scene. And this came at an interesting time. And TMZ is, you know, they got the tape. I don't know if somebody sent them that or they inquired about it. And they, they got it from the airport. But, listen, I mean, obviously this was released. Uh, WWE likes it when something negative like this happens. The former talent that they released to kind of show, hey, look, this person tainted. Um, I just, I, Riddle is one of those guys that you, you look at and you think, my God, he, he really has the act. He has an interesting character. He's great in the ring. Why isn't it working? Sometimes it's more than what we see on TV. And this is one of those cases. Whether or not AEW wants to take Matt Riddle on or anybody, I, I mean, I don't know. He's a tremendous act. It's a matter of can he uh, can he behave? If that's the case, New Japan MLW and CMLL announce a strategic alliance. I don't know what that means. I don't know if you're going to see New Japan talent in MLW. You're going to see MLW talent in New Japan. What what's going on here? But I believe now that this kind of you know, it hurts, obviously, the Triple A deal with MLW because CMLL is involved. Very interesting. I'm curious how this changes stuff. We'll see it in the coming weeks. WWE announces a new media rights deal for Japan starting in October. They're going to have an exclusive streaming partner in Japan. It's been a while. A-B-E-M-A. I don't know how to pronounce this. Abima. Is that how you do it? Abema. Maybe that's the way. The platform will carry Raw, SmackDown, and NXT along with WWE PLEs. This is the first time since 2011 WWE had TV in Japan. That's actually unbelievable to think about how they were not on TV there. NXT is going to be running their next NXT deadline from Bridgeport, Connecticut, December 9th. This will end the year for them. I'm going to tell you, we'll, we'll talk about the pay-per-view, obviously. From last night, the PLE. I, I really enjoyed it. You know, I haven't been as deeply dedicated to NXT watching. It's hard. You know, you got five hours of AEW content you got to watch. You got uh, five hours of WWE mainstream content you got to watch. Plus PLEs, plus pay-per-views, plus New Japan, plus whatever else is happening. I'm trying to catch up. I've been behind, and I was really impressed by what I saw. It was a lot of fun. Brian Danielson told the New York Post that he is now fully cleared for his match at Russell Dream. Uh, I, yeah, man, I, I think this is going to be a great match. We're going to break that down in one of the next segments here coming up. Stipulation matches against Ricky Starks were designed to protect his arm. Obviously, we knew this. Uh, I don't have the SmackDown ratings yet. But SmackDown was a, was a fun show as well. Man, LA Knight is freaking over, huh? That crowd loves him. He came and he rescued John Cena at the end of that show. Signed to be his tag partner. And they erupted. And, you know, you got to. It's interesting. You know, he, he has he has risen in this year. 2023 has been. Probably. Uh, I mean, just like what a breakout year for that guy. I think everybody realized like he has a pretty good act. Even when he was Eli Drake, people were into it. He did it in Impact. He did it in uh, NWA. Came over. Did the LA Knight thing. Still very similar. Goes to the main roster. They kill the thing that, that worked for him. And then they revert back. And it's just been this climb for him. And now he's in a major program. John Cena's his tag partner. Maybe that leads to a match. Maybe it doesn't. You know, but you gotta... Is it time to put a title on him? That's the discussion we gotta have here. What do you put on him? Does he become a contender? Obviously, it's going to be hard. Roman Reigns is the story. It's out of reach for most. And I don't think the story of Roman's loss is LA Knight being the guy. Unless, you know, something changes and they realize, oh my gosh, this guy is really, you know, the, the next Austin or the next Rock or something that we could we could grab onto and utilize. You know, he, he's doing a character that he is a badass wrestler. 
And it works. Stumping mud, mud holes in people works. Shaking your head and having a catchphrase and dropping an elbow on people works. So why not do it again? And here's the big story here. And this will lead into a couple of the other topics we're going to discuss today. Edge's contract. It's up today. He's free. September 30th, it ended. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, it ended on the 30th. So today he's free, which was yesterday. 30th. My gosh, I don't even know. We're in October already. I don't even know what day it is. What happens now? You know, Tony has hinted that there's something happening here on this pay-per-view. You never want to leave people disappointed. When you tell people there's a surprise, there's something. You don't want to leave them hanging. I don't believe this is a New Japan deal. I don't believe that. I don't think this is a just honoring an Antonio Inoki and ending the Inoki era. And here's the new AEW era. Because that would be the biggest disappointment. And I think Tony, <laughs> Tony knows that. I, I'm being very careful with this. I, I would imagine it would either be that the TV deal is done and they're announcing what their schedule for 2024 is and what they're doing leading up to the, you know, th that, or it's edge. Mercedes is still not clear to Russell. I, I wish she was. So we will see, we will see what happens here. We're going to talk about it when we talk about Wrestle Dream. But when we come back from break, we're going to talk about NXT No Mercy and talk about what a great show this was. I had a blast. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Hey, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. I drop a lot of stuff there. Let's talk about this. Uh, you know what? I'm going to let our producer that just showed up very, very, very late. Tell me, should we talk about No Mercy or should we talk about Collision? You pick since you just nicely strolled in 18 minutes late. Big night for MG, huh? Big night, big party night for him. Didn't even realize we had a show this morning. Where do we go here, producer? Okay, let's do Collision. There you go. Thank you. I, I, listen, man, I, I never thought I would enjoy wrestling on a Saturday consistently because it's not part of the regular schedule. However, I enjoy watching wrestling on a Saturday more than any other day at this point. I get a couple drinks in me. I'm hanging out with my wife on the couch and the music is for collision. My wife's singing the song because it's, you know, she's an Elton John fan. You know, it, it puts you in a good mood. I, I really think that intro that they do kind of sets you up to be like, okay, I'm going to have fun today. Andrade defeated Juice Robinson. I love this match. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Andrade, you know, obviously this was part of the plan when Collision started that Andrade would be getting a push here. Uh, he is a key person on this roster and he's putting on good, I mean, really good matches. Juice is obviously a star. Andrade got the win here. Uh, it's setting up something. Obviously, this is leading into a bigger thing for them. I don't know what it is, but I think Juice needs to stop losing also in these singles. Uh, I'd like to see him in a position where he's winning. Uh, I'd like to see some sort of contendership, something on the line with these guys a little bit. But I'm a big Andrade fan. Listen, I had the man bun for a little bit. I had the tan going and I was working out every day. There was a little bit of Andrade in me. I felt it. I would walk around. I was so much more cocky. I felt good. And then I hurt my shoulder and I stopped working out. I, oh, that my producers are in my ear. Apparently, I said some words that, that triggered them. <laughs> they're, they're laughing at me. I can see them right now. Uh, part two of, the, of Tony Storm, a portrait of a star. Uh, you know, I love RJ. <laughs> I mean, I absolutely adore RJ City. Everything he does, I, I, I get such a tickle out of it uh tony storm's fantastic doing this old uh actress character she actually alluded to her time in wwe he said she goes it was things were so much easier back in the day 
right? Talking about it like it was like 40, 50 years ago. You could just slap on a hat backwards and pie someone in the face and you were a star. Loved it. Great stuff. The Kingdom. Matt Taven and Matt Bennett defeated the best friends. The Kingdom is still getting pushed here. You know, I, the Ring of Honor story is interesting. Um, is it necessary for them at this point, right? Do they need Ring of Honor? If they're not on TV, I don't think you need them. You're already putting the, the, the people on, on Dynamite and Collision as, as, as it is. Do you need to have this other brand that you need to manage and push and market? I don't know. But I'll tell you, there's so many belts. Do you need an ROH six-man title and an AEW trios title? Do you need the pure title and the TV title and the world title and the tag title and the six-man title and the women's title there? I don't know. I don't know the answer there. Tony might. Julia Hart had a nice squash match. Julia Hart has been getting a nice big push here. Um, interested to see what the, where they go with this and how they do it. Now, here, here's where things heat up. Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega defeated the Gates of Agony. It was a fun, fun match. Kenny looked great. Chris looked great. They cut a promo at the end. Their, their whole story is that, you know, they can coexist. They don't like each other. This is a one-off. They're not looking to, you know, go through the AEW roster as a tag team. This is just vengeance. Talking about Kenny, they're on my TV right now watching uh, Collision again. I thought they did a good job here telling the story of tonight. Maybe some shenanigans happened tonight. The Righteous, Vincent and Dutch, defeated Travis William and Judas Icarus. Display for the Righteous here. Aussie Open, Big Bill, Ricky Starks, defeated the Blackpool Combat Club, NFTR. It was Danielson, Wheeler, Utakash, and uh, Dax in your main. They ended the show with, uh, they ended the show with, I, I didn't think they were going to touch Danielson and, and Zack Sabre Jr. They do a face-to-face. -face. Zack's acting cocky. He's acting arrogant. Kind of pushes Danielson. Danielson hits him with a slap. He grabs him by the neck. Then they roll out of the ring. You know, they did, they did a little bit here. I thought it was great. A uh, very good show and leading into a, a fun pay-per-view for tonight. NXT No Mercy. I was pleasantly surprised by the show. Davenport and Jordan in the pre-show match. Open, the show opens with Braun Breaker coming out with a fuzzy little hat. He was dressed like a little bear. Defeating Baron Corbin. Nine minutes, 31 seconds. You know, they, they've, they're they morphing Braun Breaker here. The character has changed. The black tights are working. The more seriousness is working. Uh, it's just a matter of when he comes to that main roster and what they how they position him and how they plan for him. The biggest story is Carmelo Hayes for me because I, I got to tell you, so impressive, that dude. Trick Williams defeated Dominic Mysterio to win the NXT North American Championship. Special guest referee was... Dragon Lee, this went about 9 minutes and 27 seconds. You know, they're building up Trick. That's the story here. And Dominic needs to get out of NXT. And I thought he had a nice little run there with the title. It elevated the brand a little bit. And now you have Trick Williams with the championship. All the right decisions are being made here. Uh, let's see. Fatal 4-Way match. D'Angelo and Lorenzo defeated Price and Nima. The Creed Brothers and Angel Garza and Umberto to retain the NXT Tag Team Championships. They went 12 minutes with this. I thought they would have given it a little bit more time. What do you think of Garza and uh, Umberto, MG? Um, I didn't think anything of them. They were good here, but I honestly, they've been kind of lost in the shuffle for me. for a Well, long they were time. trying to rediscover their characters, right? They were running this like rediscovery thing. I'm right, curious how right. this is going to pay off now for them. 
All right. So this was weird, right? So you had the British rounds rule match for the NXT Heritage Cup. No Amdar, which looks great, by the way. Uh, defeated Butch. They went 19 minutes here. So it's rounds, right? It's, what is it? Six rounds? I think it's six rounds. Each. Three minutes each. Um, I don't know. The, I, I, it's okay. I mean, it's unique. It's an interesting concept. Uh, I like to see how this would be presented on the main roster. It's essentially a, a, you know, who could get the most pinfalls, but not really. And Noam Dar took it right at the very end with a couple seconds remaining. Now, the main event here. Eli, Eli Dragunov versus Carmelo Hayes. Dragunov is so freaking impressive. Hayes looked great. No, I'm sorry, not the main event for the NXT Championship. There's another match here. Uh, Dragunov looked great. Uh, you know, nice passing up the torch here. He's the NXT World Champion. Defeating Carmelo Hayes. 21 minutes and 2 minutes. 2 seconds here. What did you think of this match? match? Match of the night? This was amazing. This was a lot of fun. These guys just just beat the hell out of each other. Yeah. Um. It would have been the match of the night, but the women kind of showed out. So, oh. for me at least. That, that women's match was so good. So good. So, so yeah. after this, you know, you're, you're thinking, okay, how are we going to do this, right? Because this was a really good match. It was a nice, serious match. You had an extreme well, rules main it. event. Yeah, give me. Think about it. The the stop the, the the fact that you put these these women in knowing that they were gonna go after that with Carmelo Hayes, because yeah. those guys weren't gonna say, Hey, we're gonna slow down for you guys. No, they just had to go over it and they did, and I was very impressed. Those last few matches were amazing. Yeah. At least for me. Extreme rules match. Becky Lynch, Tiffany Stratton. NXT Championship. Tiffany came out. Great. I mean, what a great look she has. You know, they've really elevated her. They have made her into, uh, I mean, a main sh main roster act. Obviously, that's the plan with her. She has that Barbie she's intro. She's wrestling Barbie. She's wrestling yeah, she's Barbie. Wrestling she wrestling had the Barbie, Barbie intro. And it works. It does work. And sometimes you think it doesn't, you know? Like, if this was mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I would say we've had so much of the diva look. But mm -hmm. what's old is new, you know? Think about the, the two acts that they've had. Mandy Rose, she's a throwback to the Divas era, right? Tiffany Stratton, a throwback to that. Becky Lynch was so good here. She came out. Uh, Tiffany had the, had the uh, brass knucks in the ring. Becky comes out with the, with the, guard, with the shopping cart filled with all the, all the New Jack items. You go to the New Jack store and you just pick it up. <laughs> it's a big story. It says it's New Jack store. Yeah, backstage it says New Jack store. You get a you get a shopping cart. Just fill it up with all the crap. It's great. I did get a kick out of her just walking around backstage. Yeah, like, that was going, great. Oh, this here's plunder. Here's more plunder. Here's more plunder. <laughs> she's just plunder, plunder store. Yeah, it's the plunder uh, great aisle. Match. She got a nasty cut in this match on the garbage pail spot. You know, she uh, was it a spine buster she took on the on the garbage can? I think. And when she dropped, you know, she was protecting her head. And I guess her arm hit the corner of the trash can when it, you know, obviously they're made of the thinnest of metals, those trash cans. Well, Tiffany, Tiffany got a cut in the crowd when they did that spot. Tiffany got a cut. Yeah. Guy, the guy that gave, um, apparently the guy that gave uh, um, Becky the chain is their trainer, I think. Is the trainer, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to break. We'll be right back and talk about this a little bit more. Wrestling Observer Live. Out of time. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Man, I rarely run out of time. I looked at the time. I was like, what happened? We got to go to a break. I, I, I did want to follow this up by saying uh, very impressed by both of them. Becky looked great. Uh, still NXT Women's Champion. Tiffany looked great. And I hope this was a good showing for her and what she could do on the main roster because you know, listen, uh, Jade is going to need some really good opponents. And I think the story of building new women on this roster is going to go a very, very long way. I think what they should do with Jade is have her go through all the, the horsewomen. I think you could do something like that. Let's talk about AEW. Tony had a conference call on Tuesday. 
And I'm going to pull up my notes here because I have a little rundown of Tony's conference call, media media call. Uh, initially, he was vague about Adam Cole's status. We obviously saw what they're planning on doing on Wednesday. Also, who's behind the mask? We should talk about that also. Maybe we'll find out tonight. Uh, was vague about that. He wished Jade the best. Didn't elaborate on contract negotiations, but I know she was offered a lot of money. I just think that Jade figured out that this is the only, this is the chance. This is the time. They're willing to give you what you want. You're going to be positioned in a key way. Why not take it? He also addressed the, the weird rumor that he was buying New Japan, saying he didn't know where those rumors came from. He didn't say no, but I mean, that would be something. I, I don't see it happening. I don't see New Japan selling to an American company. But it was, I think it started on Reddit and it went on Facebook and then it just spread over a couple days. Our very own Dave Meltzer asked Tony about BD, WBD having a stake and ownership in AEW. He said he would be open to it. Something in the future. But he did say that he has, a, you know, he didn't say no, they don't. Um, I've spoken to Dave about this numerous times. I've heard the same rumor from uh, key people. I've heard this conversation. I had a very interesting conversation with somebody uh, that, that was an executive in that company at one point. And I, I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a really good question for Dave to ask. I'm not asking that question. I have no idea. I just know what I've heard. I have no way of confirming it, but very interesting question to ask. Uh, he said he never said AEW will move to one pay per view a month. Yes, he never did. You know who did? Do you know who said that? MG? Do you know who said AEW will have monthly pay per views? Um, I believe that was you, sir. It was me. <laughs> it was me. Uh Listen, I, I can tell you when I was at uh, the show at Arthur Ashe, obviously, I know a lot of people there. I've become friends with some people there. I've become uh, acquaintances with some people there. And I, I, I'm under the belief that they are going to run. Obviously, they're going to run more pay-per-views next year, right? Uh, whether or not they count Ring of Honor as a pay-per-view for them, Uh and and that's the and that's the the verbiage that that we're gonna have a dispute over, right? I I don't know, but I would say. I would say that. Uh, there's gonna be close to twelve, if not twelve, pay per views next year, whether it's nine or eight AEWs and three, you know, three for Ring of Honor or four for Ring of Honor, and they do, you know, I, I don't know the makeup of this, or there's no Ring of Honor pay-per-views, you know, and it's just absorbed under AEW. I don't know, but this is, this is again, something that is leading into the bigger story here, and that's the WBD streaming rights that we are talking about. Tony also said that with a streaming service, he would like to to for it to be packaged into their TV deal next year. Yeah, he doesn't want to do a six to nine month tryout before it comes up. I He's 100% right on this. Don't do that. You don't want to do a trial to see how it goes until your contract is getting signed. You know, you want it now. You don't want to use anybody to use anything as leverage. You want to show improvement. You want to show growth. Uh, you don't want to have a weird situation. I think this is a, a telling conversation. And the big story here. What is the big surprise? Something is about to change, right? What is what do you have the verbiage here, Matt, our producer? One of the best sh oh. show writers in professional wrestling podcasts and radio. <laughs> the one that does all our show notes. Sometimes there's grammatical problems. Fine, that's okay. Sometimes he just decides not to show up till 18 minutes into the show. That's fine too. Better late than never, right? Isn't that isn't that what they say? Uh, what is, what is Tony saying? What are, what is the words that he said? Wrestle dream video. Uh, let me see if I can find this. 
He does have something planned. We know that. I can't find the video. Now, now that I... Oh, the next chapter is about to unfold, okay? This was used last night on the AEW, um, I guess, the, the countdown show, right? The, the countdown to Wrestle Dream. And, it be, and the title is, The Next Chapter is About to Unfold. I believe um, also uh, um, Excalibur said it um, in one of his rundowns. Or, and Kevin Kelly last night, they said it in Collision. They used that verbiage too. So Yeah, but originally I don't know they what had they used... Mean by that. Originally, yeah. it said, uh, as one chapter closes, another one begins for AEW. Or something along those, along those words, yes. right? And that was so, in Tony Khan's... Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, week. you know, Tony, Tony likes to do the big surprises, right? And when he does it, he doesn't scatter them sometimes. He likes to hit you, bam. So this could be more than one thing, you know, you, this could be a, I mean, this could be edge. I have no information on edge. I'm going to tell you that I have no idea, uh, if edge is going there or not going there, I would love to see him there, but I also have no idea. I, I can't even confirm that, but, uh, is it the TV deal? Well, I could tell you, I, I know that there's rumblings happening. And it could be a TV deal. I don't know if they're going to announce it today, but I expect them to talk about something very soon, today, to next week, the following week. January? I don't know. December? I don't know. But it's, it's happening. I mean, I'm hearing so much chatter about this deal. I, and again, I, I've been told, right? There are people telling me like, oh, maybe they'll go somewhere else. I, I don't see that happening. Not, not at this point, right? I, I'm not even, listen, anything could happen, right? Anything could happen. But if I'm going to take a very intelligent guess based on the conversations that I'm having, I, I mean, I would be shocked. I would be really surprised if something happened with WBD and this AW relationship fell apart. Let's go into this card. Looks great. Wheeler Yuta, Ricky Starks. You know, it is an interesting card here because it's not necessarily like a New Japan Versus AEW thing. It's it's a it's more like, hey, you want to see some great matches? We're gonna put it on. Really, you need Ricky Starks, Lucha Brothers, Ray Phoenix Penta versus Hook, Orange Cassidy versus the Guns versus the Young Bucks for a future AEW tag title shot. All right, you know something's on the line here. Into it. Will Osprey, Takeshita, Sammy Guevara versus Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi, and Chris Jericho. He's the Lionheart again, right? That's what his uh, video thing says. His Titantron video says. Whenever he's a good guy, that's what it Whenever is. Whenever he's a good guy, he's a Lionheart again. <laughs> uh, TBS Championship. Chris Statlander. Is that good, Lance? I said it, I pronounced it perfectly for Lance. Lance was, I got to tell you, I don't want to be on Lance Storm's bad side. I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> Defends against Julia Hart. All right, you know, let's see what they could do with this match. Two out of three pinfall match for the TNT Championship. Christian Cage defends against Real Darby quick. Allen. Now, Real is quick, this I'm the main event? Go ahead. Oh, I said, I, I think they're going to put the uh, title on Julia Hart in that women's match. I would be very interested mm -hmm. to see them do that. I, I think it's good that they're elevating. Now, this match is interesting, right? Because when I'm looking at this breakdown, yes, it is. This, is, this is the main event, right? Didn't Darby say it in one of his videos that he's main eventing? It could be. There's now, there's several that could be, but I I would think Brian Danielson and Zack Saber Jr. should. But I mean, it should. But you know, if you, if if we'll find out, you know, if you're gonna debut Edge, you want to put this on last. If Two out of three. If that's what they're doing, then yeah. If that's that what they're doing. Sense. New Japan Strong Open Weight ROH World Championship. Eddie Kingston defends both titles against Shibata. Very into this. I, 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 I get worried when I see Shibata wrestle. I, I, don't, I get worried when he gets dumped on his head. But, I mean, Eddie's a total professional. I, I can't wait for this. ROH tag titles on the line. MJF alone defends against the Righteous in a handicap match. Vincent and Dutch, this, this is going to be a storytelling match. 
whether a partner shows up at the last minute or the righteous do a beatdown or MJF wins a title, this is continuing whatever story they're telling here. Or those, or all his goons show up. Or do all the goons show up in the masks. AEW Tag Team Championship, FTR defends the titles against Aussie Open. This is going to be a banger. Hangman Adam Page and Swerve. This is the match I want to see. Listen, the most if you're going to talk about it, uh, the most important match on this card, okay? And the most opportunity you have with one match on this card, it is this one. Hangman needs a shot in the arm and Swerve is getting elevated. You have a unique opportunity in just a couple hours here to elevate both of these guys uh, you know, Swerve obviously is going to get elevated by this match. And Hangman, he, you know, you bring him back to life. And also, Brian Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr., which is considered a dream match. Hey, Zack's right behind me here. Wonder if my autograph of his is going up. I'll put it on eBay. Uh, I have like eight of these, to be honest. <laughs> when I went to Evolve, it was like eight of them were on my, on my chair. So I took them. Framed one of them. Uh, I listen, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. is one of the best, you know, wrestlers in the world. Matt wrestlers. Uh, Danielson is remarkable. I've been wanting to see this match for years and years. And now is the chance to see it. Uh, this is going to tickle me when they just do arm grabs and headlocks and roll around on the mat for about 30 minutes. That's all I want to see. I don't even want to see a punch. I just want to see grappling. Catches can. Very excited for this. But it's going to be an awesome show here. You also have on the pre-show, you're going to have on Zero Hour a Trios Championship Which is going match, on right now. <laughs> which is going on right now, yeah. Max Caster, Anthony Bones, and Billy Gunn defend against uh, TMDK. Oh, I'm sorry. More. I got more. I got one. I got a little bit of time left here. I totally forgot these matches were announced. Josh Barnett, Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, hell yeah. I'll take it. Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, Mercedes Martinez, Diamante versus Kojima, Keith Lee, Athena, and Billy Starks. Nick Wayne versus Luchasaurus. This is a jam-packed show, guys. Let's go. A lot of fun here. When we come back, we're going to wrap this up. We'll talk about a couple other things. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. <laughs> Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Off the air shenanigans are happening here. <laughs> My producers. Uh, they're hysterical. Listen, I think this is going to be a fun show tonight. But now the big question is, okay, well, December's coming, right? And there is another show in December. Um, uh, could, is it a ring of honor show? I, I don't know, but I do know it's a Friday, the show. So that kind of leads into ring of honor. And I've been told a very interesting market for this show. I, I, I've, I've heard this from two people, but it may have come from one place. So I'm holding off. I'll probably talk about it this week in detail, but very interesting location for this show. If this is where they're going and this is what they're doing. I'm all for it. I could get behind a show at this location if this is the case. Um, I, I think 2024, we're going into this. It's not even October where we're talking about it, but, you know, AW has a very important year ahead of them post-punk. And tonight's show begins that. You know, they've had a little bit of a shot in the arm the last couple of weeks. You know, All In was supposed to be a momentum mover, and it wasn't. It actually sucked the energy right out of the room. All Out, on the other hand, was a total opposite. And they put on an unbelievable show less than a month ago with this pay-per-view. So now it's October. Now you have a very unique show here tonight that will begin something. A new era will begin. Whether or not that's Edge or they announce their TV deal and they announce going to Max for the next set of pay-per-views, and that's the big story here. We will all find out in a matter of hours. Very interesting stuff. Guys, time to wrap it up. Go enjoy the show. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. We'll be back next week. See you all next time.